Wi-Fi is everywhere. It is all around us, even now, now in this is very room. room. We use it for communicating with our friends, our job, even our medical doctor. We use it for shopping, for paying our taxes, and managing our bank account. And it is secure, right? This is Marauder. It is a custom firmware made for ESP32 devices, either standalone or as a Flipper Zero module. It will exploit the built-in Wi-Fi capabilities of an ESP32 microcontroller and give you access to features such as creating a password-snatching Wi-Fi hotspot, spamming fake networks, or even forcing devices to disconnect, and sniffing packets that can be used to figure out the password of your network. The Marauder firmware is made by this guy called Just Call Me Coco, and he also makes and sells these standalone devices as well as these cool flipper modules. But you can also load Marauder onto the default flipper Wi-Fi dev board and some other ESP32 devices. But let's start by taking a look at this standalone device, and then later on I'll tell you how you can potentially crack the password to your Wi-Fi network. This is primarily a learning tool, and you should only test it on networks you have permission to use it on. The ESP32 Marauder V6 has a 3D printed enclosure, and inside you find a touchscreen, the ESP32 chip, a battery holder, an SD card reader, and a USB-C connection for charging and controlling the device through a serial connection, as well as a few buttons and LEDs, and finally an SMA connector for connecting external antennas. ESP32 is a relatively cheap off-the-shelf programmable microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. It is found in a multitude of hobbyist as well as commercial products. It's more powerful than an Arduino but not as powerful as a full-blown Raspberry Pi. By pressing the button on the side of the Marauder V6 once it turns it on and by pressing it twice it turns it off. There are four kinds of attacks that Marauder can do that I want to talk about in this video. But let's start with the simplest. Number 1. BLE Spamming Modern phones and computers can use Bluetooth Low Energy for lower energy load data rates and short distance communication. We can emulate some of these packets causing unwanted pop-ups that interfere with normal operation, although mostly it's just a bit of an annoyance. Number 2. Wi-Fi Beacon Spamming and Rig Rolling Marauder can send out the same beacon packets that a Wi-Fi access point uses to announce its presence. But we can name them whatever we want. We can make a bunch of random names. We can imitate an existing network name, making it difficult to figure out which one is the correct one. Or we can make some custom ones, like the lyrics for the hit Rick Astley song Never Gonna Give You Up. Number 3. Evil Portal. Marauder can function as an actual access point and a web server. If you start up our free Wi-Fi access point and try to connect to it, we are met with an integrated login page, requiring us to enter a username and password before supposedly being able of using this network to go online. If we do so, nothing apparently happens, but at that moment on the backend, our username and password has been sent to the Marauder and is saved on the SD card as well. You can make your own HTML login page or find a bunch of different pre-made ones online that are made convincingly to imitate official login pages. And finally, we get to the attack that can potentially crack the password of your Wi-Fi network. Here's a simplified explanation of how that is even possible. Modern Wi-Fi networks are encrypted. Even if we save the raw data packets floating around us at this moment, we cannot read most of them because of this encryption. When a device connects to your access point, a so-called four-way handshake occurs, where the device and the access point agrees on a unique encryption key for that specific device which is derived from your Wi-Fi password, the master key. Think of it as if your laptop and Wi-Fi access point are meeting for the first time. They're showing each other how the padlock they're going to lock their messages with is constructed. We can use Marauder to take a copy of that padlock and bring it home and inspect it further. It could take a long time though before a device is connecting to the network we're monitoring. But Marauder is also capable of sending de-authentication packets, which will force already connected devices to disconnect. And now we stand ready to capture those padlock exchanges, as all the devices come rushing to reconnect to the access point. Let us try and attack our very secure access point here. First we need to go into the device settings and enable force PMKID to enable automatic de-authentication package during the scan. 
Then we go into Sniffers and pick EAPOL slash PMKID scan. We need to pick the channel our access point is set to, and we should start seeing our laptop disconnecting from the network and the handshake packets piling up on our Marauder. All the functionality of the standalone Marauder devices are also available on a Flipper Zero if you connect an ESP32 board, like this sleek one from Just Call Me Coco, or you can also use the default Flipper Wi Fi dev board. You can use the ESP Flasher app to load the Marauder firmware onto the board directly from the Flipper Zero, and then use the companion Marauder app to control the board through the Flipper. In many ways, I actually prefer this over the standalone device. Not only is it physically more compact, but some of the menus are easier to control with buttons than a touchscreen, and I find that you get even more information about what's going on. The procedure for sniffing handshakes in the flipper is as following. Open the Wi-Fi Marauder Companion application. Scan for access points for a while. Go back to List APs and find your access point, noting the number in the front. Go to Select APs and enter the number from before. Now go back and down to Sniff. Choose PMKID and select Targeted Active. Active meaning that you will send deauthentication packets as well during the sniffing. You will see the file name of the PCAP file that your captures will be saved to, as well as if any packets have been captured. Once we've captured a fair amount of packets on either device, we stop the sniffing, take out the SD card and move over to the computer. We now have our digital padlock, but we don't have the key for it. Using the application called Hashcat, we can try a bunch of different keys to see if any of them will fit the padlock. First of all, we need to convert the PCAP file into a format called HC22000 that Hashcat can understand. Then we need a word list. A word list is a large file full of different passwords. If we want to be successful in cracking the password, it needs to be one of those inside our word list. This is why choosing an uncommon password is essential in ensuring that no one can break into your Wi-Fi network, and why testing the security of your Wi-Fi against such word lists is a good idea. There are plenty of online sources for good word lists, and I'll link some below. Once we're ready, we type out the command to start Hashcat on our HC22000 file, using our word list. This can take a few seconds, or it can take many hours, depending on the complexity of the password, the size of your word list, and the power of your computer. If you have a beefy graphics card, this can speed up the process. Eventually, Hashcat will either find the password or not. In this case, it took only a few seconds to find our very secure password. Now you could try and brute force the password by trying every combination of numbers and letters in sequence instead of using a word list. However, this would take an extremely long time if you don't have at least some knowledge of how the password is constructed. But why does it matter, you might ask? Who cares if someone gains access to your Wi-Fi network? Every website today uses SSL encryption, so your information is safe, right? Well, once an attacker is inside the walls of your network, he will have much more intimate access to your local devices. Your laptop might have a vulnerable piece of software that your router previously prevented direct access to. Maybe your TV, smart home devices, surveillance cameras, or even network drives can be probed for vulnerabilities by the attacker. Or perhaps the attacker will simply use your internet connection to perform illegal online activities. There are lots of good reasons to keep your network secure. Marauder has other interesting features, such as detecting if a deauthentication attack is happening, or the probe request sniffer, which will look for packets from devices that are trying to connect to access points that they are usually connected to. This is valuable information because most access points' physical location in the world has been mapped on sites such as Wiggle.net. So knowing what access points a device is trying to connect to would tell you where in the world that device is usually located. Back in the day I was riding my bike around the neighborhood with a laptop in my backpack, scanning for open Wi-Fi networks. This is called wall driving. You can mod a GPS into the Marauder V6 and this enables a wall driving feature which locks access points in the GPS positions. You can also share this information with online databases such as Wiggle.net. Marauder can also be operated with a command line interface through a USB serial connection on your computer. This will give you direct full access to all of Marauder's capabilities. Check out the wiki page in the Marauder GitHub for a detailed description of the different commands. There are some caveats to using Marauder though. First of all, the ESP32 microcontroller only supports 2.4 GHz networks, so you will be unable to attack 5 GHz networks with Marauder. Secondly, some newer Wi-Fi access points will have protection against the authentication attacks, although in some cases you can attack the clients instead. There are far more technologically advanced Wi-Fi penetration tools out there, 
And even a laptop with a Wi-Fi adapter can do a lot more. But what's interesting about Marauder is that it runs off cheap and pocketable microcontrollers, even if it isn't as capable as other tools. I hope I've given you a small insight into what ESP Marauder and Wi-Fi security is all about.